it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. It's time for me to read some questionable romance and decide if I'm gonna get Kindle Unlimited. Alright guys, so this is going to be a special themed reading vlog. It is also going to be a spoiler vlog, so this is not spoiler free in any way. I am going to be talking about these books as well as the plots and what happens in the books, so this is your warning. If you are planning on reading the series and you don't want to be spoiled, then you know, bookmark this video and come back to it once you have finished. But if not, if you guys don't mind being spoiled on this book series, then by all means go ahead and continue watching. Hey guys, it's Editing Millie popping in here, so I'm actually going to be making multiple appearances in this video. Um, every now and then I forgot a couple of little details that I feel like are actually important to kind of follow along with the story in terms of the plot and the context behind it. Um, but also wanted to pop in here in the beginning to say that I forgot to include some disclaimers and trigger warnings. Um, so like I mentioned, this is going to be a spoiler vlog. You're going to get all of the details. And um, in case you're not comfortable with some of the content, um, there's obviously a lot of sex, um, a lot of violence and death and torture and killing and things like that. In this book series, it gets pretty, pretty dark. It's kind of mafia-esque. So if you are okay with listening to that kind of content, go ahead. If not, you know, be warned. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go and continue editing this video, but uh, it's a really long one. So have fun, guys. So I recently decided that I needed a mood read, but like a completely out of the ballpark, out of my comfort zone mood read. And I had been hearing a lot about some of like the dark, steamy, questionable romance books that you find on Kindle Unlimited. Now I've never had a Kindle, I don't have a Kindle Unlimited account, um, but my friend does and she has been mentioning to me a lot of book series that she thought I would really enjoy. One of them I did end up picking out which was the Fake Boyfriend series by Eden Finley. Um, I read the first three books. I read book one, two, and four of that series. They're all companion novels, so it was slightly okay for me to read them out of series there. But I read those three books from that series because they were available on my library hold, but unfortunately the rest of the series is not. It's only on Kindle Unlimited. So that was my first motivation to get a Kindle Unlimited account, was to finish that book series. Um, and then there's just been some other series that I've been hearing from here and there from other booktubers that I have been curious about and I, I'm i kind of scared to dive into that world. <laughs> I'm gonna be fully frank and honest. I'm a little scared to dive into that world and I think I'm scared of liking it too much and then completely switching from being like a fantasy and contemporary book reviewer to just reading trashy romance novels and that's all I like and that's all I want to do. I'm a little scared to dive into that world to be honest. But I've decided to bite the bullet and read another book series that is really really popular on Kindle Unlimited and a very popular author as well from that genre. Um, so I'm going to be reading the Madison Kate series by Tate James. So I heard about this series from Princess uh, Paperback, the booktuber, and I was really intrigued by the premise and so I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the first book and just see how I like it. I'm at the 40% mark with this book and my world is shattered right now. I am kind of low-key obsessed with this book and that led to me deciding to not only want to do a spoiler video for this entire book series but also kind of ask myself the question am I get, gonna get Kindle Unlimited and this video series is gonna basically decide that for me. <laughs> so luckily all four books in this quartet are available on Libby so I can, you know, read them for free with my library app. Um, but basically if I end up enjoying the series I think that's gonna be my final push to get Kindle Unlimited so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I decided that I wanted to do a spoiler reading vlog because there is so much that I want to talk about with this book series that I cannot contain myself to not do it with spoilers because it's it's a wild ride. This is a wild crazy ride. Alright guys, so let me start off by saying what this book is about. So the first book in the series is called Hate. It is the Madison Kate series because our, you know, title character is Madison Kate. I thought that was her first and last name. It is not. She has one of those southern double names and so her first name is Madison Kate, which is, you know, 
kind of a mouthful because every time somebody says her name it sounds like a parent patronizing her <laughs> but you know I got used to it um, also I am listening to this book series as an audiobook which was definitely a good idea because I am really loving the audiobook so in hate we are following our main character Madison Kate who at the beginning of the story she is a 17 year old girl it is Halloween of her senior year and she and her best friend Brie have kind of snuck out of this party a typical high school party and they instead go to a illegal um, street fighting kind of club to watch a match and at this club they're gonna watch this legendary um, wrestler called the Archer and she has never seen the Archer and so she's really excited to see him in person and see one of his matches um, but then shit goes down and the entire match there's a bunch of gunshots and there ends up being a riot and there are two rival gangs there it becomes a hot mess and Madison Kate tries to flee um, and she gets almost caught by the leader of one of these gangs who knows her from <laughs> her past and then she is rescued by these three mysterious boys um, who save her and as they are getting her out of that dangerous situation one of them gives her his hoodie that she uses because she is cold and she is then um, taken by the police um, because they while they search her they find out that the master key for the location for this underground club is in her hoodie and so she is then blamed as the mastermind behind this riot and also framed for murder since somebody was killed during this riot so she goes to jail for three months her trial gets acquitted and she is let go and she is free however her father sends her to Cambodia for nine months to kind of get away from the limelight since she was basically used as the scapegoat for this riot and also by the way thrown under the bus by her politician father because he publicly blamed her for everything um, so she goes to Cambodia she comes back um, and it's she's about to start university she got rescinded all of her offers to go to university because of her trial and so she has to go to the public university that is funded by her father um, and so she comes home and she finds out that her father's new um, girlfriend that he's dating happens to be the mom of one of the three boys that saved her um, but also framed her and so now they all live together in the same mansion and if you're thinking to yourself wow this sounds like a fan fiction yes I also thought the same thing this is the most unrealistic story plot line that you can only find in the fan fiction world and I am eating this up by the way this is only chapter one this is only chapter one and so if it sounds like I'm spoiling the entire plot of the book no I'm just spoiling chapter one right there there's even more crazy wild rides with all of this <sighs> so now we have our main character Madison Kate who has come back from her trip to Cambodia where she was trying to find inner peace but clearly failed at it and she is just fueled with hate and vengeance and a need for getting revenge on these three mysterious guys who framed her and basically ruined her life completely derailed her future because now she has even though she was proven innocent she has um, all of the stigma against her and publicly she is seen as like the criminal and you know she wasn't allowed to go to the university that she wanted to and so she kind of sees all of her dreams in life you know go up in smoke so she wants vengeance against these three guys who are these you know three also outrageously handsome six foot five well muscular built men who happen to also be living with her in this very kind of weird like stepbrother stepsister kind of situation and oh did I mention that her maybe soon-to-be stepbrother is also the legendary archer who is the wrestler that she went to go see anyways and did I mention it's a reverse harem story y'all know what that means that means that she ends up with all three guys <laughs> this book <laughs> I am enjoying this book so much like unnatural levels of enjoying this book um, and I say this in the nicest way possible to the author. I really truly do. This book is trash. Like <laughs> it is, it's that kind of book where even the book is very meta and it knows that it's very cliche and levels of corny. And 
the book itself knows that it's a very unrealistic plot line. It definitely takes jabs at itself. There's even one point where she's describing her new living situation to her best friend Brie and she's like, is this some kind of reverse harem stuff that you find in romance novels? Like there's even that kind of level of like the book itself knows that it's kind of poking fun at itself. So I don't feel as bad poking fun at it. And I hope y'all don't take offense by it either because this book is wildly popular. This has some of the highest Goodread ratings I've ever seen for a book. It's like 4.6 or something like that. Like everybody and their mother loves this book. And I don't know if they love it, like truly love it or love it ironically. I kind of love it ironically. <laughs> Objectively speaking, based on the writing and the plot and the character development work, this book is like a one star, okay? Or a 1.5. Um, enjoyment level? This book is 10 out of 10. Like this is a five star book in terms of enjoyment level with how much I am just eating this up. Granted, I also really love trashy reality TV shows, so like this is kind of like on par with what I usually consume in, in the essence of trash. Um, but I am just really loving this book. It is just very addictive. I kind of know where it's going and at the same time I don't because the plot is so ridiculous and so unrealistic and so convenient how everything just seems to happen. Um, but I'm loving it. And our three boys, um, the author is trying very hard to make them distinctive, which I do appreciate because it would have been very easy to just make them all the same type of character. So we have Archer, who is kind of our leader of the group, and he at this point is trying to go pro with his wrestling career. And he's basically um, a grouchy asshole, like all the time. He's just mad all the time. It's like he woke up on the wrong side of the bed every morning and wants to take it out on Madison Kate. And I mean, she's a very annoying, whiny princess, and that's why he calls her princess all the time. Um, but he, he also has to stick up his ass, like always. Um, and then we have um, Cody, whose real name is Kodiak Jones. Let's let that name sink in there, Kodiak Jones. So Cody here is kind of like your tall, adorable puppy dog kind of character who's just like, really sweet and tender and just has like this very nurturing side and he is a professional trainer slash Instagram model. He's also the personal trainer for Archer and his up and coming career. And then we have the last member of our trio which is Steel. His name is Max Steel which is a porn star name if I've ever heard of one. And Steel is kind of like the residential mechanic. So he's not necessarily part of the wrestling world but he grew up with the other two and is you know friends with them and they all do like you know mixed martial arts they're all very fit he is also an instagram model um and you know also a secret piano prodigy as well because let's, let's throw that in there hey guys editing millie popping in here super quick one of the things that i forgot to mention about this book is that archer cody and steel are three main love interests here um not only are they you know mfa fighters instagram models and piano prodigies but um their backstory is that they were all part of a gang and they were able to get out of the gang and so they're ex-gang members but they're basically like their own trio gang um, because they do have like a weird relationship with the other gangs and the other gangs actually fear them because of how powerful they are. Um, so they were like very prominent gang members and now they're trying to be like on the straight and narrow but they still do a bunch of shady stuff on the side and uh, yeah I forgot to actually mention that part which is pretty important for the story. So, so at this point in the book Madison Kate is going to college which is a complete and utter joke because there are so many people from her high school that are going to her university because they were bought out by her father. Um, he basically bribed all of these rich, wealthy families to attend the university because he's trying to make it this new up and coming thing. He's basically trying to make it the next Ivy League. And oh, let's not forget, during the entire year where she was like in prison or in Cambodia, her father, the politician slash business owner, decided to kind of merge this town um and take like the bad ghetto side with like the rich private elite side and merge it together to be one town um and 
yeah, let's see how that goes. But we still have the rival gangs in place because, you know, why not? Oh, and remember, remember, I alluded to the fact that the leader of one of the gangs has history with Madison Kate. It's because when she was 12, her house was robbed and her mother and all of her staff were brutally murdered, but she was the only survivor because she was locked in a closet. And the leader of this gang was the one who murdered her mom, but he was never put in prison. And on top of that, he is the older half-brother of Archer, her potential future stepbrother slash love interest. Because why not? <laughs> Oh my god, I love this book. I absolutely love it. I love it. I am just eating this up. I, I cannot wait to read more. So I'm going to continue binge reading this book and this series, and I will keep you guys up to date on the ridiculous wonderfulness of this book series. Hey guys, so we have great lighting here. This is a very good angle for me. Love this for me. Um, so I'm going to give you guys an update on Madison Kate, uh, the first book being Hate. So, <laughs> this book. I'm at the 60% mark now, and it's just continuing to get crazy. But now it's like a different level of crazy. So the first part of this book, the first chapters, there was just a lot going on with the plot. And there was a lot of like coincidences and like really unrealistic plot points. And now the plot has kind of slowed down a little bit, but it's like a different level of ridiculousness. Like, the fact that these characters are all adults, like, I know Madison Kate is technically 18, and all of the boys are, like, early 20s, um, but they're acting like high schoolers. And I think that the only reason why these characters are not high school age and they're adult age um, is so that the author can get away with um, very smutty scenes, which she is doing. And you know what? Good for her, because her smut scenes so far have been really, really good. Now, as ridiculous as the plot is, the sexual tension between Madison Kate and the three boys is just top tier. It is great. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I'm kind of shipping her with all three boys, not gonna lie. Um, but the plot itself is just kind of on this really juvenile, ridiculous level. So, as previously mentioned, Madison Kate is pretty mad. She is just fueled by anger. She wants nothing but revenge against these three boys. She absolutely hates them, but she has nowhere else to go because she has no money, so she has to live in this mansion for free. And it's like, girl, if you really hate these guys that much, go live with a friend, go get a job, move out, get your own place, like... You can hustle, but no, you're going to live in this mansion with these cute, attractive three boys that you hate. Right, right, her. Right, honey. So, <laughs> she is fueled by vengeance to get revenge on these three guys and basically ruin their lives. So, her first act of vengeance is, I shit you not, she switches the salt and the sugar. That's right. They um, potentially framed her for murder, and her first retaliation is to switch the salt and sugar bowl. So they spit out their coffee because it is salty as fuck, and she laughs and cackles maniacally because the first part of her vengeance is complete. And I'm like, are you 12? Is this some kind of high school prank? Like... I understand why you're mad and you have all reasons to want vengeance against these three boys that ruined your life, but honey, you switched their salt and sugar and you think that that's the first step? I don't understand. So the three boys keep going on and on about how they have no idea why she's mad at them. They never framed her. They didn't know the key was in the hoodie and she doesn't believe them because she's like, no, they're full of shit. They, you know, didn't stand up for me. They didn't say that, like, it wasn't, that it wasn't her who did it, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. She's still mad at them. She doesn't believe them. And they're very much like, no, we didn't do that. And they were purposely sent by her dad to protect her during this time. So the three boys are sticking by her side. They're being super overprotective assholes. Like, they, especially Archer, he's, like, monitoring what she wears and all that stuff and who she can hang out with and everything like that. And he's just basically being super controlling, and it's very toxic behavior. It's not cute or protective. It's just controlling. Um, and so she has a reason to kind of be pissed about these guys that she already hates. She blames them for her life struggles. 
and they are being like over control of assholes. But your first act of vengeance is the sugar bowl, really? <laughs> Which, by the way, her next her next point of revenge is not any better because she puts purple dye in their face wash so that one of them has a purple face to school. That's it. So like, we're just, the plot is moving along as it is. Um, and now we have a stalker plot line too because apparently she's had the stalker for years that she never knew about and he's leaving like creepy dolls and very creepy violent messages. So now we have this plot line that we're going with. So yeah, let's see how it goes. I cannot wait to read more, honestly. Hey guys, so I'm back and I'm channeling my inner Madison Kate here with like her iconic, you know, pale pink hair and just like she always wears purple too and we're just going for that bright pink vibe today. We're channeling our inner Madison Kate. All right, so I have been doing nothing productive over the last couple of hours. I was supposed to edit and haven't done that because I'm listening to this audiobook because it is like crack. I am so addicted to listening to this audiobook. I am just enjoying my experience so much. I, I really am liking this book. I, it keeps getting worse, but I'm loving my experience reading this book. So at this point, I am at like the 80% mark and I am going to finish it tonight. I already know that. Um, and I'm ready for it too, because everybody in the Goodreads review has been alluding to this cliffhanger, this very like epic jaw dropping cliffhanger. So I'm excited for this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come back here and tell you guys some more of the plot. Um, we're still kind of continuing with the whole stalker plot line. She's trying to figure out who has been her stalker and she finds out that her dad knew about her stalker for years, but has been keeping it a secret from her because it's not like a real concern according to him. And he's just been pretty much like a shit dad and it's just been illustrating that aspect of the fact that he's just been shitty her whole life. Um, she's continuing to get on the boy's nerves and they're continuing to kind of like fight back with her, but it's been more of her just initiating a bunch of stuff because she's the one who's mad at them. And now she's finally taking it to the next level to the point where I'm like, oh, okay, we're getting serious now. I'm gonna switch over here because my arm was getting tired. Okay, so she has amped up the game to the point where she put um, these steroid subs, like steroid drugs in Archer's protein drinks. And he is gearing up for his first like official match um, as like a pro wrestler and like pro MMA fighter, basically. Um, and so he has to, you know, check in and do the drug test the day before. And she spiked his protein shakes with steroids. So this is going to go well, clearly. The, the person who has anger issues is going to handle this news very well of when he gets disqualified from his first match. I'm just waiting for that blow up to happen. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be messy. It's going to be nasty. Um, at this point, she has slept with Steel, which I was surprised because I thought she was going to sleep with Cody first. She slept with Steel first and like their smutty scene was pretty good. I will say like so far Tate James, her smut scenes have been really good. Um, and she's kind of like had a potential thing with Cody as well. It's kind of gearing up for him to be the next conquest. And now the boys are starting to be jealous of each other. Um, but I wanted to touch up again on the kind of like toxic behavior that's being shown by the male leads because I can see it being a toxic thing and I know that it's not okay. But I am a little worried about some of the readers who are going to go into this series and not um, realize that this is not okay behavior. So I'm really happy that this is not a high school story, that this is not meant for YA. This is clearly mar marketed for 18 and up adults who hopefully understand that this is just a story and it's not supposed to be a depiction of actual reality because that behavior is not okay. They, um, show some very controlling behavior. Like there's one part um, kind of near the beginning of the book where it's the first day of college and Madison Kate decides that she wants to wear this slutty schoolgirl outfit uh, that is a Halloween costume and in no way appropriate for university. But she's 18. It's her body. It's her choice. She wants to wear the slutty schoolgirl uniform. Okay, go for it, Madison Kate. 
that's your choice. Um, and obviously Archer gets upset and he confronts her in the cafeteria and he tells her, you need to go home and change. This is not appropriate. This is not okay. And she's like, you can't tell me what to do. Like, I'm 18, I'm an adult, you can't tell me how to dress, what to wear, blah blah blah. She's right. Um, and she purposely dressed that way to antagonize him and set him off. And so he gets this random chick who hates Madison Kate, some random nobody chick, to spill her juice all over her outfit so that she has to go home and change. So he orchestrated all of that. And on top of that, she decides like, okay, you want to play this game? So she strips off into her bra and panties in the middle of this cafeteria, full of people. And she's just like, okay, there we go. I took off the outfit. Like, and of course he's getting all mad um, about all of this, which, you know, I kind of understand, but kind of don't. Cause it's like, you're not her boyfriend. And even if you were, you can't tell her what to do. Um, but the fact that he went to such lengths to try to get her to change was like really, really controlling and not okay. Um, and there's other circumstances. There was this guy, this, <laughs> oh my God, I completely forgot about this character. Okay, there's this, this male character. It's a fellow college student. His name is Bark. That's right, Bark. Like the sound that a dog makes. Um, that's his like football, high school football nickname. And he decided to keep that going into adulthood. So we, we know where Bark is ending up in life. And he's just like your typical like douchey football guy. And he wants to ask out Madison Kate. And she's not interested in him at all. And he's trying to ask her out and Archer is like trying to cock block that. And he's just like intervening and stuff like that. And then she agrees to go on the date just to piss off Archer, you know, just to mess with him. And he then is telling her, you can't go on a date with him. You can't go out with him. And he's tries, he physically stops her from leaving the mansion to go on a date with this guy. And then they beat up the guy because like they heard that he was gonna like do bad things to her, which, okay, I get, but at the same time, you can't just beat up the guy. Um, you can't stop her from going on the date because even though you're doing it of good intentions, like, no, it's controlling and it's toxic and it's not okay. Like, ugh. and these are supposed to be the love interests. So they're supposed to come off as like protective, but they're just coming off as like over controlling assholes. So <sighs> yeah, the book is a little problematic. I'm still loving it. I'm still eating this shit up. Like it's great. So <laughs> what does that say about me? I, I just love it so much. Why? Why? Hey guys, um, so it's been a hot minute. Um, in fact, it's been three whole weeks since I last talked to you guys. So I did finish the first book for Madison Kate. I did finish Hate, and I will get into that in just a second. So my initial plan was to just continue reading the series back to back. So the second, third, and fourth book were not available for me to borrow off Libby. So people were already reading the book and I had to go on a hold for my library in order to get the books. Um, I thought it was going to take a couple days and I would just like jump back into the series and I think that whoever borrowed them borrowed like the whole series in one shot and were just hoarding them, which is ironic because that's now what I'm doing. Um, but basically the second, third and fourth book were not available for three whole weeks. Like I kept waiting for them to pop up and they were just not available. So I didn't mean to ghost you guys, but <laughs> they weren't available for me to read. Um, so I did managed to finish reading the first book. I just never got around to actually filming um, a reaction to it. So I'll get into that now. Um, so I did finish Hate and I was kind of torn about my rating for this book because enjoyment wise, this was a five fucking stars. Like I enjoyed myself so much. Like I'm not saying it was like amazing quality work, but the enjoyment was there for me. I was the target demographic for this book and I was just eating all of it up and it was just like half ridiculous but also half really entertaining at the same time um but then like i mentioned you know th there's a certain level of ridiculous to it so it feels a little weird for me to give this five stars so then i was like okay rating wise it would be more like a three stars but then that also felt kind of weird and so i decided i'm not going to rate this series I'm not like I'm putting it on Goodreads that I'm reading it, but I'm not putting a star rating. I'm not going to rate it at all. It's just 
no, I don't think these are the type of books that you can write. So for the ending of Hate, it was very, very dramatic and we had this huge cliffhanger. So basically, Madison Kate is at this party and she has a huge alteration with um, Archer and Cody and Steel and a bunch of stuff gets said and it's basically revealed to her that Zane, Archer's older brother, who's the leader of this gang, was actually not the one who killed her mother. And they're trying to say like, hey, we know that you think that Zane killed your mother, but she didn't. And here's the evidence that we have. And they presented her the evidence and she's just like, no, that's not how I remember it. And they're like, well, you were a traumatized 12 year old. Uh, do you think that maybe your memories are not sound and that you might not remember things correctly because of, you know, trauma? Hey guys, editing Millie once again. So one of the other things I forgot to mention is when Madison Kate is learning the truth about the fact that Zane was not actually the person who killed her mom um, and that she was not remembering things correctly, she also finds out that the reason why she has Zane as part of her memories linked with her mom is that her mom was having an affair with Zane and so she was cheating on her dad with Zane and she would bring Madison Kate along when she would go off on vacations with him and they were hooking up. Um, and so that's why she remembers him in association with her mom, but she like forgot her memories because of the trauma and so she didn't remember that. Uh, it's one of those like very flimsy plot points <laughs> for the book of her memory loss, but that's why Zane is important. That's why she remembers him. And so she freaks out and she's just like, no, get away from me. You guys are trying to gaslight me. And she steals her car and she heads off. And then her car crashes and she ends up at the abandoned amusement park from the beginning of the novel, from Riot Night. And then somebody's after her and she believes that it is Archer or one of the other boys because they have a similar knife, like a pocket knife, to the one that Archer has. So somebody's like chasing after her and trying to kill her. And then the boys are also there, but she believes that the boys are trying to kill her, so she's running away from them for her life. And then someone fucking stabs her, and she falls into the boys' arms, and it's the ending of the first book. <laughs> so she just gets fucking stabbed, and then cliffhanger. <laughs> so of course I'm going to pick up the second book. Okay, so at this point, I have picked up book number two, which is Liar. And I am about 25% through this book, and y'all, it's, it's good. Tate James just keeps on giving us, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, so Liar basically starts off about two weeks after the events of Hate, where Madison Kate has woken up in the hospital. She is all good. She has recovered from her injuries. Um, she was stabbed, but no vital organs were damaged because, you know, of course, it's it's a fanfic. Um, she's basically banned the boys from entering the hospital because she's just like, they're the ones who tried to kill me. And the police are like, um, no, they're not. It's evidence that someone else was trying to kill you. And they're the ones who brought you in and saved your life. Um, so the police are like, these are not the people that tried to kill you. She doesn't believe them. She still thinks the boys are after her. And so she tries to basically escape and just like not really go on the run but just stay hidden but of course the boys find her and bring her back to the mansion and they're like yeah we have to protect you because someone is trying to kill you and she figures out that the person who tried to kill her was not her stalker so there are two different type of people who are antagonizing her in her life so we have her stalker that's very like creepy and like sexually objectifying her and being very violent. And then we have someone who's trying to kill her and they are apparently two completely different people. So everybody just hates Madison Kate. That's what I'm learning. So she's back at the house and her father has suddenly like reemerged and he's just like, hey, I'm here to let you know that like you're now under house arrest because you know, you're pulling all of this stunts and you're doing foolish things like getting yourself stabbed because apparently that's her fault. And, and he's saying that like, you know, now the three boys are basically like her jailer and they are taking her to and from school and she's not allowed to leave without their supervision and blah, 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 because she's basically being babysat. And she's like, well, I'm just going to move out because, you know, I don't need you. I don't need your money. I'll start over. And he pulls the whole, if you leave this house, I'm going to get you committed to a mental asylum and say that you're crazy. And I can do it because I have connections 
in like the health board committee for this mental asylum and they'll do what I say. What kind of shit is this? Like shitty dad award of the year much? <laughs> So she basically has to kind of like play by the rules and she's really upset about everything and at the same time her stalker is just like elevating with like creepy messages and dolls he's sending her and it's just... I feel bad for her. I do. I feel bad for her at this point. However, however, she's bouncing back and forth between Steel and Cody because if you recall, you know, she had her little thingamajiggy with Steel and she's getting friendly with Cody and now, you know, some more stuff has happened between the two boys and some jealousy is running amok and Archer's just sitting in the corner just being upset about everything, so we have that. Um, so yeah, the spicy level has gone up quite a bit and we're only at the beginning of the book, so I am enjoying it so far. And it, this book series just brings out the dramatic side of me and I'm loving it. I really am. <laughs> So I'm going to continue reading Madison Kate over the next couple of days and I'll keep you up to date on all the shenanigans that are going on. Hey guys, so I'm back to give you guys an update on Liar, which is book two of the Madison Kate series. And I'm at the 75% mark. So I was planning on updating a little bit more consistently throughout the book. However, this book is mainly smut and not a lot of plot. We did get some plot in the beginning of the book, but since then, not much has really been happening. Madison Kate's still being terrorized by her stalker. They're still trying to figure out who's trying to kill her. And at the same time, she's still trying to find a way to kind of get rid of the boys and their protectiveness and get out of like her father's grasp so that she can get her own independence and be able to make her own choices. But at the same time, she's realizing that she has these three insanely strong, muscular, violent men who are there to protect her and she has both a killer and a stalker so it might be in her best interest to keep them around as her personal bodyguards and fuck toys, which is exactly what's happening with this book. So with the first one we had a really nice balance of like plot, if you can call it that, plot and you know some like spiciness. And in this book, we're getting more smut. <laughs> we're getting mainly smut. The spicy level has gone up. So she has, you know, done some more stuff with Steel. She and Cody finally got it on on the kitchen table. That was pretty good. And at this point, I'm just like, I don't think she's going to do Archer in this book. Like, Archer, we know, is the grand finale. Um, so maybe the third book? Um, but we just got to a really interesting part where basically they're trying to make Archer jealous and so she's just continuing to do stuff with Cody and Steel, who are his best friends of course, and they had a little, little threesome scene which was very, very spicy, <laughs> I will say. Um, so you know what? Tate James can write smut. I will give her that. She's a very, very excellent hetero smut author. She is good at what she does. And you know what? Her plots might be very, very convenient, but I still love them. I'm also starting to get some theories on who the stalker could be. Um, so my first original theory was that I thought it was the football guy from her university who was trying to ask her on the date and then the boys wouldn't let him. I was thinking that maybe it was more of his younger sister because she was introduced in the first book as like a Madison Kate groupie and so she was already giving the crazy vibes and so I thought that like her stalker, well first of all I think her stalker's a girl. I, I'm pretty certain it's a girl. Like I think they're trying to convince us that it's a guy but I think it's a female because I think with like the doll aspect it's giving me more female stalker vibes. That's just the way that I'm interpreting it. And so at first I was thinking it could be um, that guy's little sister because she's already a groupie and she already got like, crazy vibes. But then I'm also kind of thinking that it's her best friend, Brie. And the reason why is because the stalker is able to get through a lot of security things and they've been really, really tight on the security. And the only ones who know certain things are her, the boys, and her best friend Brie. And so Brie is a character that has a lot of access to Madison Kate um, in terms of like her privacy, security. She always knows where Madison Kate is because she's her best friend, of course. So that's another theory that I have. I feel like maybe Brie is putting on like the dumb girl act 
and maybe she's actually secretly devious and conniving. That's my other theory going into it. So we'll see if I'm right. Um, I have no idea of who's trying to kill her though. I feel like it's probably going to be one of those characters that we don't really even know existed until like the end of the series when they have like a villain monologue or something like that. Um, but those are my theories for the stalker at least. So we'll see how it goes. I, I know it's gearing up to be another kind of like dramatic ending um, for this book. I don't know what it is. Um, I will say that I kind of like the first book a little bit more. Like while I'm enjoying the smut for the second book a lot. Um, the first book just had this, this je ne sais quoi about it, this level of ridiculousness that you couldn't surpass. And the second book is trying, but like nothing can beat the ridiculousness of the first book. Um, so I'm going to continue reading over the next couple of days and I'll keep you guys up to date. And I'm really excited um, that I'm reading this book and it's basically dominating the beginning part of May at this point for me. So. I'm really also happy that I have the third and fourth book ready to go, so as soon as I finish the second book, I want to dive straight into it. Hello! I'm back again, and I have finally finished Liar, which is book two of Madison Cates, and honestly this was a bigger cliffhanger for me than Madison Kate getting stabbed in the end of book one. Um, I was not expecting it whatsoever. So we basically had another kind of like huge dangerous incident happen at a party because I mean I think at this point Madison Kate should learn that bad things happen when she goes to parties and just she needs to be an introvert and stay home and watch Netflix. That's all I'm saying because bad shit keeps happening to her every time she leaves her house. So she goes to this party and she ends up meeting Cody's ex-girlfriend Drusella from the first book and she's like pretending to be nice to her but not really and she basically, they do this bet over playing pool while the boys are also like dealing with these two gang, these two rival gangs that decided to meet up. They're dealing with a lot of stuff. She goes into this bet with Drusella. She loses the bet and so then Drusella gives her like this really strong drink that she has to do in one shot. And so she's just like, no, I think you're trying to trick me. So she just takes her drink instead and downs it. So lo and behold, Drusella had roofied her drink. And so she was disappointed that she didn't fall for her trick and taken the drink and, you know, been in a very dangerous position. Um, but it turns out that the stalker found out that Drusella was trying to roofie Madison Kate. And so she had to eliminate her for trying to like do this awful thing to Madison Kate. Not that he or she isn't doing awful things as the stalker to Madison Kate, but okay. Um, so instead, the stalker puts this like really um, strong drug in the drink to cause an overdose, but Madison Kate takes the drink by accident. So Madison Kate is starting to go through the overdose and so she's like really in and out of consciousness. She's hallucinating, like she's like kind of dying because the overdose is killing her, her body. And the stalker basically kidnaps her and tries to reverse the effects and then leaves her in the trunk of one of the boys' car. And the boys find her and she's taken to the hospital and they save her life once again. Um, and they discover that it was the stalker who had saved her, even though the stalker was the one who had like tried to kill Drusella and then the stalker sends photos of the fact that he did end up killing Drusella. She was like brutally murdered and her throat was slit um, at the end of the party. So there's all that stuff that happens. It's all dramatic. And then we have the actual cliffhanger ending, which I didn't see coming, but the trajectory of this book should have said, yes, of course, bitch, this is where it was going. So she finds out um, that the boys, specifically Archer, made a deal with her father and he basically bailed him out because the dad was like going bankrupt. So Archer pretty much owns her dad and like his house and all of his like company and real estate and all that stuff. So every time Madison Kate keeps trying to kick him out of the house, he can't leave because he owns the house and she doesn't know that. And then on top of that, it turns out that her scumbag of a father sold her to Archer as part of the deal, sold his daughter, this human being, as part of the contract. So now Archer technically 
owns Madison Kate and that's why he didn't want to like ever do stuff with her and he was like very adamant about you know not wanting to go down that road with her and uh, so now she's back to hating the boys all over again because they knew about it and they didn't tell her about anything which you know rightfully so she can be mad at them so now I'm really interested to see the dynamic for book three because now everything has just gone in a whole new shitstorm um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see where this is gonna go. Um, uh, I can't wait to start the third book, honestly. Hey guys, I have officially started book three from the Madison Kate series, and I'm really, really excited with the direction that this book is going in. So I have officially started Fake, which is the third book in this series. I'm at the 25% mark, and a lot of things have happened. And this book is kind of going back to the same roots as the first book where we're getting a little bit more plot and less smut. Don't get me wrong, I'm loving the smut in this book. It's very nice and spicy. But book two had like kind of an imbalance of like way too much smut and not enough plot. So there has to be an even balance. And even if the plot is ridiculous and doesn't quite make sense sometimes and we really have to like suspend our disbelief in reality, there's still a plot that I can follow along with and it's horrible and wonderful at the same time. Alright, so Fake basically starts off where Liar ended, where Madison Kate finds out that Archer apparently bought her from her father when she was only 17 after Riot Night. And we find out at the beginning of the third book that not only did he purchase her when she was a minor, but that he married her when she was 18. They forged her signature on a marriage certificate. And this entire time since she's come back from Cambodia, they've been husby and wifey. <laughs> and everybody knows, like the three boys know, but she never knew. And it's just, oh. This is such a fan fiction book, but I absolutely love it. I am I'm here for this level of trash. So Madison Kate is rightfully pissed off. And she's just like, I'm done with you boys. I never want to talk to you again. F you all. And she goes with Brie to Aspen to go skiing in the snowy mountains during winter break. And when she comes back, she's basically moved out and she has a apartment in this apartment complex that Zane and his gang basically own and they run. And so she's there and she knows that they're only offering her this apartment because if she's there, then Archer and his boys can't hurt the gang because she's kind of the bargaining piece and she knows she's being used but she also needs their living space and so she goes along with it. Um, and right now the boys are trying to basically win her over. Cody and Steel are basically groveling at her feet and like trying to win her over um, and Archer still being a douche as he usually is. Um, but we have a new character into play, which at this point, this is probably my most hated character of the series. Okay, there's been a lot of ridiculous characters and really sleazy kind of characters, but this one, you know, it takes the cake. It takes the winning prize of them all. So we have Enter Scott. And Scott is this random boy that the girls met in Aspen during winter break. And he was staying at the same winter lodge. And he basically like started crushing on Madison Kate, but Madison Kate was like, no, I have all of these issues going on. And she tells him everything everything and she's just like so I can't be dating right now I'm not interested like no I'm not about that he's like okay no worries no worries we can be friends then this homie transfers from his university from God knows where he was at to her university purposely because he wants to date her and he tells her this when he shows up to their school and she's like hey I thought we talked about it I'm not really interested in dating and he's like it's okay, I'll pretend to be your fake boyfriend to have the boys jealous and like know that you've moved on from them and I'll be part of your revenge plot. And she's just like, yeah, that sounds like a fantastic idea actually. Um, the only problem is that Scott is the most annoying character ever. Because even though she says over and over again, hey, I'm not interested, hey, we're just fake dating to get them pissed off. Like, hey, nothing is gonna come from this. Hey, we're just friends. He ignores all of that and continues to act like they're actually dating. <laughs> and it's the most infuriating thing possible. He is the most annoying character 
in this series, by far. And you know what? I don't even blame the boys if they get all violent mafia towards this guy because I really, really don't like him. And he's so annoying. <laughs> but he's just brought a brand new element to this story. So that's kind of where we're at. We got some more plot thrown back into this book. And I mean, of course, Madison Kate's going to forgive the boys because, come on, she is. But we're going to see how this goes. And I'm just really excited. And I'm going to continue listening to it over the next couple of days. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, we're still trying to figure out who the stalker is and who the killers are. And we'll see how that whole thing goes. <laughs> Hey guys, popping in here to talk about some more Madison Kate. So at this point I am 50% through the third book and even more crazy shit has happened because Madison Kate has killed a guy now. <laughs> like we're going down a really, really dark path with this book. So, um, so much has happened. Like I'm actually really excited with how much plot is happening in this book. Like I mentioned, the second one didn't really have a lot going on, but with this one, we're getting way more plot. So um, Madison is still living in the apartment that Zane owns, and she is being trained by Cass, who is one of like the head honcho guys next to Zane. But Cass is like secretly a teddy bear, and he's just like being really nice to Madison Kate, but not in the way where he's just like trying to get in her pants, but more of just like older brother kind of vibes of being just like let me take care of you because you clearly need some help and he like teaches her how to fight and things like that and it's like a really wholesome friendship that I really like and I swear to god if Tate James kills off Cass in this series I'm gonna be upset because he's like the best guy. So besides that Madison Kate is still hanging out with Bree and Scott and we still hate Scott. Scott is really annoying. He's not getting the hints that she's not legitly interested in him despite how many times she says it to him and they're out going to the movies and then all of a sudden there's like a shooting and someone's trying to kill Madison Kate and it's like the hitman once again and the boys are there because they have been secretly following her and being her bodyguards even if she doesn't forgive them yet which at this point she's pretty much forgiven Cody and Steele but they're still like in the doghouse but she you know has engaged in activities with them that says otherwise. So basically the three boys come to the rescue, they take Madison Kate back to safety, and it turns out that Steele was able to hunt down the guy who was trying to shoot at her, and he was a hitman that had been hired because someone put a hit out on Madison Kate, and so they realize that even if they get rid of this guy, it's not gonna stop more people from coming after Madison Kate, and so they have to really find out who's throwing the hit on her to get rid of them. Um, so they have basically tortured the guy and they bring Madison Kate to go like see him and, and talk to him because she really wants to like, you know, see who this guy is that's been trying to kill her. And um, it turns out that he was the one who had stabbed her at the end of the first book and he had been like trying to kill her a second, another time in the second book. So it was this guy. And there's like a bunch of like fighting going on and the guys are arguing about whether or not to kill him. And then Madison Kate just goes into this state of like shock, but anger and hatred and just nothingness. And so she just grabs one of the guns that the guys left on the table and just shoots this guy, point blank, <laughs> just kills this guy. And it's just like a huge shock because no one was expecting her to do that. She was not even expecting to do that herself. And she just like fucking killed this guy in cold blood. Um, <laughs> so I was a little bit surprised because I did not think that we were going to go this dark with the book. Um, because I knew that the guys have done like questionable things and they have very sketchy paths. However, it's kind of stuff that's alluded to and that the boys do kind of like off camera. Like we don't see these scenes actually really happen as much. Um, but it looks like Tate James is just taking the cake gloves off and she's just like, no, this book is dark. This book is really, really dark. And we have some like mafia gangster mobsters type of characters. So there's going to be some violence and torture and killing. So we're just going to roll with it. So um, Madison K is embracing her dark side, so she killed the guy. Um, I mean, granted, it is a guy who's been trying repeatedly to kill her, so it's not like the guy was innocent. It wasn't entirely self-defense either, but 
it happened. So now she's in shock with the whole thing. And yeah, we're going to see, you know, <laughs> where the story goes from here. Um, so just to keep you guys, you know, clued into who I think the stalker is and who I think the killer is, I still think that they are two different people. Everything is kind of alluding to Scott being the stalker because he keeps saying and doing creepy shit. Um, but I feel like that would be way too easy if this random guy who appears in book three is the stalker. Um, so I think that that is kind of like a trick. They want to trick us into thinking he's the stalker, but not really. Um, I, I kind of still think it's Brie. Like, I know it's fucked up. It's her best friend. They've been, like, bonding some more and all that stuff. But I still think it's Brie. Like, I, she still gives me sketch vibes. And then um, my secondary choice is still the Barker family, whether it be Bark himself, his dad, who's like the really weird, sketchy professor, or like the younger sister who's a groupie. Like definitely the Bark family has something to do with so something in regards to either being like the killer to the stalkers. <sighs> and then I don't know who put the hit on Madison Kate. I really don't. But there's like... There's so much more that's going to happen in this book. I can feel it. So I'm excited to continue with it and just see where it goes from here. Hey guys, we are back. We have the dark vampy makeup today because that's just the mood that we are in. And I'm here to tell you guys that I have finished the third book from the Madison Kate series. So I finished Fake and I have a lot of thoughts. So I originally was going to update you guys yesterday. Um, however, I started getting a migraine and so I figured I would just kind of wait until I finish the book to give you guys an update. So here we are. Um, a lot has happened since the last time I caught you guys up with this series. This is the, the series that keeps on giving. Um, so basically, yeah, Madison Kate just killed a guy. More things happened after that. Oh yeah, her and Archer finally made up. They're finally on the same page. They got over their issues. They're no longer like bickering. Archer's pretty much like, no, I have feelings for you. I like you. And Madison Kate, you know, begrudgingly is like, well, you're not that bad. Um, so naturally they have sex on the side of the road. Um, <laughs> and then they like go away for the weekend to like continue consummating the marriage. So Madison Kate returns to the mansion. She has moved right back in and, you know, realizing that it's been Archer's mansion all along and that they've been like pretending that it's her father's mansion. So all this time that she's been trying to kick him out, you know, hasn't worked for obvious reasons. So she's moved back into the mansion and now she's basically in a reverse harem, open relationship with the three guys. She's basically, you know, intimate and romantic with all three of them and all three of them are learning how to share and they're you know working hard at that um and so you know more fluffy stuff happens it's going good but then but then we get to the part where um someone tries to break into her apartment um and it looks like it was the stalker who was trying to do it because there's this whole blackout situation um and then on top of that what else happens why can't I remember what happens in this book? I literally just finished it this morning. It's because I can only think about the ending. And then Scotty Boy is like still in the picture for some reason. He's still trying to hit up Madison Kate, being like, hey, we still need to have our fake dating relationship. And she's like, no, I'm over that. Like, we're done. Like, stop. And he's just like, no, but I love you and we should be together. And like, why are you forgiving the boys? Blah, blah, blah. And she's like, please leave me alone. Like, you are creepy. I don't want to be even your friend anymore. And he's not taking no for an answer, which is extra creepy. And then, um, yes, then Madison Kate and Brie get into this car accident because the hitman is after them. And so they, like, arranged for this car to smash into their car. And there was a bunch of, like, there's, like, eight guys with guns there. And they were trying to take out the guys. And they were trying to take out the girls. And then at the last minute, Cody is able to save Madison Kate, but Brie is in this horrible, like, car accident, and she's taken to the hospital for this, like, um, emergency surgery, and then they find out that Brie is actually pregnant, and Madison Kate is, like, feeling so guilty that, you know, her friend got hurt because they were trying to kill her instead, and all that stuff. And so they go back to the mansion, they're, like, you know, waiting for her to wake up, and um, Dallas, who is Brie's boyfriend, messages Madison Kate saying he's coming over because he has some news about Brie that he needs to share with her. And it turns out that Scott actually stole Dallas's cell phone. 
and sent that message to Madison Kate. So Madison Kate, like, you know, let him in and stuff like that, thinking it was Dallas. And he basically, like, comes into the mansion and he's just like, you know, you're so stupid for thinking that, like, it was Dallas and you're not protecting yourself and this is why people are trying to kill you, blah, blah, blah. And you can tell that he's about to do, like, sinister things to her. And she's like, oh my god, you must be my stalker. And um, basically he's trying to attack her and so she grabs one of the guns that's hidden in the mansion and she fucking kills him. She shoots him in the head. Um, and then the boys, you know, come out and they're just like, what happened? And they're like disposing of his body and she goes with them to help dispose of the body and she's just like, I'm basically one of you guys now. Like, I, this is my second person that I've killed in like a week. Um, and like, I need to just, you know, like work with you guys and trying to figure out who the stalker is, who the killer is. And, you know, I'm in it deep now. And it's like, okay, we're really going down that dark road. And then the ending is like, this is actually my favorite ending of the three books, where they've disposed of the body and they have found like evidence in his apartment that he was the stalker, all of that stuff. But then she gets a message from the stalker because lo and behold, it wasn't actually Scott. And um, he's basically saying like, you know, oops, you got the wrong one, I won't miss. And then the cliffhanger is that they have like the little red sniper thing on someone's chest and someone's about to get shot. And I'm like, <gasps> so I'm excited to read the part of that one. <laughs> Why am I not making coherent thoughts? It's so hard to describe everything that happens in these books because so much happens and I like get confused on the timeline and like what happened and all that stuff but you know what I'm really happy that this third book had so much plot it gave me it gave me a lot and I was very happy with that and now that you know she's actually romantically together with all four boys that leaves a lot of opportunity for some really really good smut scenes in the next book we all know where this is going I don't have to say it we all know where, where, where this is going to go. And I'm excited to finally figure out who the stalker is and who the killer is. So we'll solve that mystery. The only thing is that now I don't think that Brie is the stalker. Because she was in the hospital unconscious when everything was happening with the stalker. So it can't be her, right? This feels like when I was trying to watch Gossip Girl and trying to figure out who Gossip Girl was. Um... And I, I couldn't figure it out because even the content writers didn't have their shit together. Um, I'm hoping the Tate James does. <laughs> but I, I don't know who it is now. And I'm just... Uh. Alright, so I'm waiting to get the fourth book. I have it on hold on Libby. And I should be getting it within the next couple of days. So my hope is that to, I will be able to finish the fourth book in the last week of May so that I can finish off this series in May. That would be great. It just all depends on when I'm able to get a hold of the fourth book. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys are liking this, this crazy chaotic ride of reading this book series. <laughs> Hey guys, um, so it's been a hot minute since I last updated you guys on where I was at with the Madison Kate series. So at this point, it's been about a couple weeks since I last updated you guys, and I have finished and read the fourth and final book in the Madison Kate series, which is titled Kate. Um, so the reason why it took me so long to update you guys, I actually picked up this book maybe a day or two after I finished the third one. Um, but the reason why I did not give you guys any updates is because around that time I ended up getting COVID. <laughs> so I was sick for about a week and a half and during that time I didn't want to film anything because I just, I felt like shit. I was really sick and um, I decided to listen to the audiobook for Kate um, because I was sick and didn't feel like doing anything else. And I actually ended up finishing the book in two days. I was just listening to this audiobook nonstop. So I wanted to wait until I got better before giving you guys an update. At this point, it's been about two weeks since I finished the book. Um, so my <laughs> memory of some of the details is already getting a little bit fuzzy, but for the most part, I know how the quartet finishes and I know how the fourth book went. Um, so I'll give you guys an update on that. Um, one of the things before I dive into the fourth book is I wanted to actually go back and see what the page count was for these books. 
And the reason why is because I've been listening to all of these as audiobooks, and so I remember, you know, how many hours the audiobook is listed to take um, in order to finish it, but I just don't know page count. So I went back in my bullet journal, where I have all everything documented, and um, these were actually pretty chunky books, and I did not even realize that. So the first book, um, Hate, is 418 pages. The second book, Liar, is 448 pages. The third book, Fake, is 548 pages, so it's technically a tome. And then the fourth book, Kate, is 598 pages, almost 600 pages, and I read that book in two days <laughs> because that's just how much I was loving this series and just getting into this world. So without further ado, let's dive into how Madison Kate's story finishes off. So with Kate, we dive two weeks after the events of the third book, where it looks like Steele was about to get shot by the stalker. So Steele does get shot by the stalker in the chest. He is rushed to the hospital, but he does survive through that whole ordeal. And the book quickly goes into two weeks after the event where Madison Kate is trying on a wedding dress. So it turns out that they decided enough is enough, especially with everything that happened with Steele. Her and the boys decided to formulate a plan in which they were going to have a very public, formal wedding in order to basically kind of get the killers and the stalkers out to kind of attack her and put her as bait so they can once and for all end all of this shenanigans instead of waiting for someone to come and attack them in their own home. So um, she's planning to marry Archer. Nobody knows, like the public doesn't know that they're actually married and so they're pretending that they got engaged and now they're getting married because both of them at this point are public figures and so their engagement and subsequently their upcoming marriage ceremony is the talk of the town. Um, and so she's kind of dealing with the whole, the fact is the wedding is supposed to be like, you know, a sham because technically they're already married. It's just supposed to be for her to be a trap for bait, you know, um, but at the same time, Archer is kind of taking it a little seriously, you know, and she's kind of like, I don't know if I want to actually be married to Archer. Should I divorce him like I had planned and all that stuff. And her and the boys are getting on good terms. They've got that reverse harem down to a T. They are all taking turns and sometimes not taking turns. Um, so there's a lot of smut in this book, a lot of smuttiness, a lot of spiciness. But for the most part, it's very wholesome smut um, because all of them are kind of on the same page now. And it's just us as the readers getting to enjoy this dynamic and seeing it play out. And so half of the book is like, of course, you know, the action and the mystery thriller element and us figuring out who the killers are, who the stalkers are. And the other half is smut, just pure and simple smut. And like I've said before, Tate James knows how to write smut. It's very, very good. Okay, on to all of the stuff that you guys care about and that I cared about. Who are the killers? Who are the stalkers? Do they get caught in the end? Of course they do, because this is a fan fiction in the book. So the killer <laughs> ends up being, oh wait, okay, hang on, I have to backtrack here. So in the beginning of the book, we find out some more of Madison Kate's mother's history, because she was the one who basically hid her history, like hid the paper trail of her history and her family members, as well as Madison Kate. And the reason why is because her mother comes from this lineage of people that own one of the biggest diamond mining enterprises that comes out of South Africa. And her mom was kind of the next in line to inherit the family business. So all of a sudden, all of these family members are getting killed off mysteriously left and right, and it's being made into accidents. We find out that Madison Kate's mom actually had a twin brother who was one of the people that gets mysteriously killed in an accident. And so she decides to go on the run. She's a teen, basically the same age that Madison Kate is in the book. She's a teen. She decides to run off and have a new identity and hide her family lineage so they can't find her and they can't kill her. So everything's going well. She ends up marrying Madison Kate's father, and that's definitely a marriage of convenience. They don't really love each other, but she wants the safety and security of Madison Kate's father, even though he is a piece of shit. Um, and then eventually they catch up with her. And so the person who orchestrated all of the 
brutal killings of everyone in her family was um, Madison Kate's mom's brother-in-law who basically was just like, I want to take over this family that I married into their business. And so he's the one who's orchestrating all these hits. And so um, at the same time, Madison Kate's mom has got a stalker. And so she's trying to run away from the stalker while at the same time the killers catch a hold of her and she is killed from the hit. So it was kind of debating back and forth whether or not it was the hit that killed off Madison Kate's mom or the stalker, but it was proven that it was the hitman who did it. Um, and the stalker was very, very upset because he was, you know, of course, obsessed with Madison Kate's mom. And a couple years later, that obsession then transfers to Madison Kate because she becomes a teenager. Um, so Madison Kate develops her stalker, and at the same time with everything that happened with Riot Night from the first book that basically drew attention to Madison Kate's existence, and that's when she started getting all of these hits placed on her because they realized there is still a remaining family member that could inherit this business. Okay, so now that I've given you guys the background context to this, um, basically they devised the whole trap with the wedding. And then um, they're able to kind of escape from the people who came to the wedding church to, you know, kill them all. But then they are betrayed by Zane, who, if you guys recall, is the older brother of Archer, who's the leader of the gang, who was her mother's ex-lover slash affair. And he betrays them and basically tries to sell Madison Kate to the hitman so that he can get the bounty from that. And um, he's quickly caught by Archer and goes, bam, bam, bye, bye. So Madison Kate gets kidnapped and Archer and the boys go into rescue mode and they hunt her down and they save her and they kill off everybody who dared to touch a pink strand of hair on Madison Kate's head. So then they go back to the mansion. They're all recovering from their injuries. They were all injured in this whole kidnapping thing. Um, they're at the mansion for a couple days and then all of a sudden their mansion gets attacked by a bunch of men in masks and it turns out that the stalker has hired one of the rival gangs to help him break into this top security mansion where they all live to then kidnap Madison Kate. <laughs> because now the stalker's like, enough is enough. They almost killed her. They kidnapped her and almost killed her. No one can protect her except for me, the stalker. So he tries to kidnap Madison Kate. And he almost gets away with it because he basically was able to seduce the boy, not seduce, <laughs> subdue the boys. And he threatened to kill them if Madison Kate wouldn't hand herself over. She does, but at the very end, she's able to escape from him. The boys are able to wake up and find her, and they basically shoot him. And as he's dying, Madison Kate rips off the mask and is trying to figure out who he is. And she doesn't recognize who he is, except for the fact that she realizes they have the same eye color. And in his dying breaths, he reveals his true identity. He's Declan. His mom's twin brother, who faked his death and didn't actually die, and became obsessed with his twin sister, some incestuous vibes here, and he basically stalked his sister, and when she died, he then reverted all of that obsession to Madison Kate. So he was stalking his niece. Oh, the creepiness from it. On top of that, it turns out that he was pretending to be one of the security guards at the mansion. He was a security guard that we was in the book from the very beginning, from the beginning of book one. The only problem is that we never really paid attention to the security guards, or at least Madison Kate didn't, which means that we as the reader didn't either. Um, she never had any relationships or bonds with any of the security guards. She never remembered their names. And he was always wearing a disguise. He was always wearing, like, color contacts. He had dyed his hair completely different. And he had a whole fake identity that was, like, top-notch. And they all thought he was who he said he was. Turns out he wasn't. On top of that extra icky factor, and I don't know if I even mentioned this in any of the previous... Um, but there is one part, I believe, in book two... Um, her best friend Brie is talking about the fact that while she was gone in Cambodia for that whole year after riot night, um, she had met someone and they were getting pretty serious, but then she found out she was pregnant and he was saying, like, you know, you have to have an abortion, and she went and got an abortion, um, like, a couple weeks before Madison Kate came back, and that she broke it off with the guy. Well, it turns out that 
the reason why she's being really kind of like sketchy about the details about this was because she's like well it turns out that he was a lot older he was like 20 years older and he was married so I didn't want his wife to find out turns out yep you guessed it it was Declan the creepy uncle who dated Brie in order to get information about Madison Kate from her because she had disappeared to Cambodia and nobody knew where she was so he dated her this entire time just to get closer to Madison Kate and get information about her. And when it got way too serious and like, you know, she was like getting pregnant and like Madison Kate might find out about the whole situation, he basically lied and said he had a wife and they broke it off and blah, 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 blah. But it turns out that he was closer than they had even imagined. <laughs> Ugh. So the book ends pretty well. They, the boys decide that they want to move and buy Madison Kate, like her dream home. And so they basically move into the countryside in this estate. I mean, it's a, it's a mansion. It's a mansion that's even more secure than the one they already had in the city. But they decided to all live happily ever after in this country estate where they're away from the world and they could just be in love with each other. And it was a very nice, happy ending. So there's that. So my thoughts on this book and my thoughts on the series. So with this book, I thought it was pretty good. It was not my favorite, but it was not my least favorite of the books. Um, there was an equal amount of like action, mystery thriller, and kind of the wholesome and spicy smut. So I thought that was really good. I thought the pacing actually was really good. Um, I just had, my main issue had to be with the reveals of the killers and hitmen and the stalker. So. Essentially, I kind of feel like it should have been reverse. I think what should have ended up happening was the wedding trap worked out well. They were able to smoke out the killers. They were able to take out the hitmen. Everything went well there. And I think that we actually should have had it where the stalker does infiltrate the mansion to kidnap Madison Kate. And I think that he should have been successful in kidnapping her because the stalker is basically this mysterious figure throughout the four books. We are way more interested in the stalker, or at least I was, as the villain of this story because there was that creepy factor to it. There was that just ick factor to it. Versus the killer hitman, it's like you're kind of separated from that because we don't really know who it is and it turns out it's not anyone we even really care about. It's some distant uncle that, you know, is in a different country. So we don't really have that emotional impact of finding out who the killer is, and nor do we really care. And so it would make more sense if that part was taken care of at like the 50% mark of the book to have just that really intense action of the wedding leading up to that. And then subsequently after that, we have Mass and Kate being kidnapped, being held by the stalker, and the boys are trying to find her and rescue her from the stalker. And I think it would have been, I guess, better I mean, granted that some shitty stuff would have probably happened, some creepy, icky stuff, and just like being in the presence of the stalker would have been horrible. But I feel like that would have been way more impactful if Madison Kate actually spent some couple of scenes with the stalker and we find out like why he's doing this in the first place and her realizing that it was the security guard that lived with her this entire time and just kind of like going through all of that. And I kind of would have liked it if she did have some kind of relationship with the security guard. Like, obviously not romantic or sexual by any means, but just, like, that she was, like, friendly with him or something like that. Like, he was nice to her so that it would have been, like, a bigger impact. But to find out who he was as he was dying, and that was, like, the only scene where we actually saw the stalker in the entire series, it just felt anticlimactic when it could have been like drawn out and we've had the whole villain monologue I, I would have preferred that to be honest and I think it would have made more sense for her to have been kidnapped by the stalker versus her being kidnapped by Zane and subsequently the whole killer aspect of the book so I think that's probably something that I would have wanted a little bit different um, because I felt like that would have just been a more satisfying ending to the series than what we ended up getting it almost felt like all of that for it to be over so soon. In terms of the actual ending of the book, I really did like it ending on a happy note. I like the fact that she is with all three guys and they've all said I love you to each other and they're all on the same page about this relationship. And you know what? If it works for you, it works for you. She gets to have sex with these three hot, muscular, tattooed guys all day long. And you know what? That works for Madison Kate. We're happy for her. 
and she actually grew as a person. She was so annoying <laughs> in book one. Um, granted, book one has to be my favorite, like, because it was a level of obnoxious that I don't think I've read in another book, and I don't think I ever will. Like, it was wonderful to read. Horrible, but wonderful to read. Book two and three, okay, pretty good. Book four, I also enjoyed, but book one, I like the boys. Cody and Steele are wonderful. They're fantastic. I love them. Archer is definitely my least favorite of the three. Archer has a lot of qualities that are pretty toxic, and I think that they were swept under the rug because he's hot. Um, versus Cody and Steele were also hot, but they were like decent nice guys, you know, when they weren't killing people. Um, <laughs> my standards for nice guy in this book series is really low, by the way, because it's like, they murder, but they have integrity. <laughs> so reading this series has just been a wild, crazy ride. It's, I am going to remember this forever. I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm sold on Tate James as an author. Okay, so I almost forgot about why, like, I made this video series to begin with, which was not only to document the, the crazy emotional roller coaster that is this book series, but also to answer the question, am I going to get Kindle Unlimited? And uh, the answer is no. <laughs> I kind of thought about it, and I was just like, I completely loved this reading experience, I loved reading this books, like, why not? But the truth of the matter is that I mainly read fantasy and contemporary. I'm going to continue reading fantasy and contemporary. That's what I'm going to spend my money on in terms of books. Um, and these kind of trashy romance books are something that I want to indulge in every now and then as a nice like palette cleanser in between the books um, that I genuinely do enjoy. Um, so I don't think getting a Kindle Unlimited membership right now is really like logical for me because I'm going to be dropping money on books that I'm probably not going to be picking up as often as the other ones that I already own. So therefore, no, I'm not going to get Kindle Unlimited. However, I am going to continue to read Tate James books because she has like 12 other books already out and published and I'm going to spend my money on that. I'm going to spend my money on reading more Tate James books because she's awesome and completely sold on her books. Love them. Tate James, if you're ever watching this video, you did great, honey. You did great. Love your book series. All right, guys, that is it. This was a very successful experiment, if I say so myself. And I think I found some new favorite books of the year, honestly. All right, guys, I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I know that the topic of content is a little bit different than the usual stuff that you guys see on my channel, but I hope you guys liked it nonetheless. I like to change it up here every now and then. So if you guys are liking this video, please be sure to give it a likes and thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys have read the Madison Kate series and what were your thoughts. And if you guys have read some other Tate James books, drop some recommendations down below in the comments. And as always, if you guys are enjoying my bookish content, please be sure to subscribe for some more. I'm Millie. Thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Bye.